the studio for us is super familiar. And the reason that it is is because we've done all of our recordings since the day of the Dead EP at Rightway Studios, which is literally the alley. On the other side of my back door is the back door of Rightway Studios. So we are right here. And Steve Wright lives literally across the street right here. And this is Todd's house, by the way. So I live in Todd's house. Uh, Todd is my landlord, which is sort of funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's we've done all of our records there. So, the, so it's just putting on a different hat. You know, it's, you know, we did the last um you know we've done all all the polka dot cadaver stuff there and we did the knives out records there and and um we just recently did beyond paranoid there um all the re-records you know all the original albums i mean it's been a working relationship there since 2005 so you know think about that it's crazy how many you know how, how many records we've actually made you know in that building really nothing was different jumping right back in. You know, we, I, I went up there to do beyond paranoid's vocals, um, and to kind of just, just be there in spirit, uh, and, and in person for Tommy doing his drums. Um, Jason and, and, uh, Brian were kind of left to work with Steve, um, our engineer. Um, but going back to the studio, I mean, it, to be quite honest with you, it was like, I don't know, almost two years later, and it didn't feel any different at all. The way that I'll do bass is, you know, uh, after uh, Jason will lay some guitar down, Ben Springer will go in and do the drums. Um, and then uh, I'll go in with Steve afterwards, and then we will take about three days or so and develop the bass from that. Um, you know, and then usually, you know, we give ourselves about three days when we're doing it. Um, and me and Steve have never, I think there was one time that after three days I had to go back in and fix like one thing. Um, you know, we used to give ourselves like just a full three days with setup and getting tones and everything like that. And, you know, if, it, if the chemistry is good, then you can get it done in two to two and a half. All right, what are we doing here, motherfucker? Um, what were you... Cut, 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 cut. Good, I like that tone. What do you think? You like tone? Yeah, I think so. Steve um, is a guru when it comes to tones and gear and everything. And um, it's really sort of... Every time I go in and we, d I think that, you know, we're going to repeat something that we did from last time as far as, like, getting a sound or a tone... Um, he, it's what he switches it up one way or another. And usually it's because he's got, you know, a new compressor that came in from Germany that was, you know, there was 10 of them left in the world and it's from 1942 and or something, you know, he just has all this great stuff like that. Ah, uh, that's what it is. The, uh, that's why it's so messy. Um, the middle ones are different. Middle ones. Oh. So, you should do that on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ideas off of each other and uh really we kind of ended up coming up with the majority of the majority of the stuff that i contributed was uh just off the cuff it wasn't you know i tried to sort of premeditate all that before going in to save time and recording and everything um and it just it was like all right we'll toss that out the window and oh let's try this and try this okay so Like 
really pank those high strings. Maybe. Yeah, make them ring out. Yeah. Make it stick. You know, in, in the past, on some of the re-records and things, like, you know, Tim's got some studio stuff at home. He can um, do keyboard parts, and he would send them over, you know. And then Steve would mix them in. Jay might do guitar at home, reamp it in the studio, and come and do things like that. And this time, everybody, uh, Tim came in town, did the stuff at the studio, played on the brand-new piano that they just got over there, um, and utilized everything that Steve had. Otherwise, I mean, there's things that are on this record that we couldn't have done if we didn't have Steve's um, gear at our disposal. It actually, the last time I recorded into the studio with Steve was Sweet Nothings and Ad Nauseam. That was what, 2015, 20, 2014 and 2015. Um, so it was actually cool to kind of have that guy behind you, kind of kind of leading you and giving you some notes and stuff like that. Um, every other one before that, uh, the re-records and some of the other stuff that we were doing, I just sent in tracks from here. But um, yeah, it was cool just just being there. Um, the live studio, you know, just was really cool. Uh, piano, actual real piano, real roads, all that stuff like that. Um, yeah, and just kind of having the uh, having a little little angel instead of the devil on the other side to kind of be like, hey, I like this, I don't like that, kind of you know, instead of just being by yourself in the room, kind of doing that stuff. So. Hey, buddy. <laughs> kind of have an outline and uh like everything else everything's just kind of up there and um he lets me he he does like we have kind of a uh a small little thing where it's like okay this will work that'll work but he'll he'll definitely take take after take it's um he'll he'll let you kind of breathe a little bit but he'll also know when to when to kind of move on Cause you can, you can keep doing things and doing things over and over and over again. And uh, sometimes you'll get, you'll get lost into that yourself. You know, like I could do it better. And then you realize you go back and listen to that stuff. You're like, Oh, it's yeah. We, we either hit it already, or this is, this is the one, this is the take. Organ, organ. Show me your organ, Tim. The Hammond B3 organ, that thing fucking sings, man. It, uh, you can come close with, you know, different sounds and stuff like that. But when you're in the room and that Leslie is just loud as hell and just getting that distorted, just nasty grinding sound, dude, it's, it's fucking awesome. Man. I only had three days, so it was it was different that way. Where there was kind of a kind of a crunch time, you know. So, actually, in all honesty, there was some stuff afterwards that I forgot I played. <laughs> like I was uh, I was listening to some of the stuff back, and Jay was playing. Them. I'm like, oh, you guys, you guys did some extra stuff. He's like, dude, no, you played all that. I'm like, really? I fucking play. Like it was it was kind of a time crunching thing. It's like we got this much time, you know, in the studio. Let's just get this done. And it was like an ultra focus kind of thing, you know. So. We did as much as we can in the studio. There's obviously, you know, synth that I have over here and different things like that that I could send in. So the main process when we did was, okay, you're not going to replicate that piano sound. There's the roads and the organ. It's all the live tones in there. So we kind of went through and just knocked all those out first. Um, and then when it comes to, and we were done, we, we had a little bit of time afterwards. We can mess around a little bit, but there was a couple things where there was, certain synths that I did over here that we couldn't get to the sounds that he had over there. So we're like, okay, we can just track those over, over here, obviously, and send it later. But, um, but yeah, yeah. Same thing there. And once again, it's just, it's better to have somebody else like, like Steve with you to, to kind of guide you, you know, it's always fun when you're working on something where, you know, we have a bit of an expanded budget, I guess, for this. And, um, 
you know, I, a lot of the material uh, for the re-records and, you know, some of the, some of the lower level bands that we work on, I do myself here um, as far as the record, like the guitar recordings. Um, and for a DFD album, you know, I do it all in the studio with Steve. So it's, that's always fun, you know, to get in there and do that. Catch it and kill it. Uh, an interesting tone is my Strat on the hot pickup. Maybe. It's a bright tone. But... Well, this, this I was actually kind of hoping for a, maybe a little more warm, though. Oh, like a big, like. Boy, that is a hot, hot, hot strat, man. Hot strat. <laughs> but it is. Yeah. That pick up. You know, I can get guitar parts here for the other bands, um, and the, I can get them to like a really good place. No complaints. The tones are good. Everything seems to work just fine. You know, it's like ninety-five percent of the way, but it's that last five percent. You know, when you're working on a dog fashion record, when when it has to be perfect, that last little five percent that that when you're actually recording the guitar in the studio, it makes a enormous difference this uh, steve and i worked on the guitar tones for this for i don't know a couple of days which you know you know normally i don't get to do so we were futzing with pedals and microphones and you know i had a whole line of amps set up and you know it was it's it's fun it's it's definitely fun what are we looking for do you want maybe like a i mean i could even say like this like just we're just for like, just like ratty like yeah because this is going to be a double and i'm looking for something not so perfect okay so like kind of dull and oh what did i do here it is it's up your focus ha <laughs> this fucking guitar five, five string special i mean it just sounds like ampeg it's just muddy it's, it and sounds dumb. like an ampeg Muddy and dark. Can you imagine being in that factory. Quality control. Well, it's muddy and dark. Stay <laughs> it's it sounds like it sounds like a long haired dude smoking cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. Outside. With slumped shoulders. Yep, in the seventies. <laughs> there you go. It actually sounds right for this. Yeah. It's just like there's no attack. It's like, wah, yeah. wah. It's perfect. Start one more time. That is, that is ridiculously perfect. Here we go. The best part of it is when we actually hear live drums being played to the songs, you know, and really, you really know what they're going to sound like then, you know, like it's, you know, I can have like a silly temp drum track in with some things and you kind of get a feel like an idea of the feel for it. Um, but when the drums actually are performed and they are with the music and you really start to get an idea of what it's going to be, that's that's my favorite part of the whole thing because the guitar and stuff, you know, like, you know what it's going to sound like sort of in advance, unless you, you try to trick up a, you know, some sort of super weird, you know, audio designed effect thing um, that you can't, that I, that I can't do here. Um, and Steve is a wizard at that, but yeah, the drums, that's really where the, where the material starts to take form. In the past, I would go in and I would lay down my drums to, you know, a scratch guitar track. With this process, we actually did it backwards, which was super, super enjoyable on my part and for Steve as well. So we did the um, scratch electronic drums in May of this year. 
And then I came back up over the summer and laid down scratch acoustic drum tracks. And then everybody recorded their parts for the most of it. I think there are a few keyboard things and some of the horn parts weren't written, but I had the benefit of going in after everybody had finished recording their parts and then play to them as opposed to the opposite. Usually I go in and do my drums and everybody plays to me. And then when I'm done, I hear all these little nuances that maybe I would have liked to have played to, but I didn't get the opportunity because I went in first and I'm done. Whereas in this case, I got to go in when everybody was done and then play to those little nuances um, and get them, it's, it was a more complete drum part. I love working with Steve. Uh, I mean, he he and I work so incredibly well together. The approach to these songs is getting the best feel. Steve Wright, who records us, uh, is Dr. Feel. I mean, that guy, it's, it's not necessarily about making it perfect. It's about making sure that, that it feels right, that it feels good. I approach the recording wanting to get the right part first and foremost. And I'm, I'm always relying on Todd, Jay, and Steve in the control room. Does that feel good? You know, does that, well, you know, they ask me, like, what do you think about that? I, I don't know. I'm playing. What are you hearing? You know, what are you feeling through the speakers? Does it feel good? Does it sound right? Uh, am I doing too much? Am I doing not enough? Do I, is there anything that I'm, that you want me to accent that I'm not? Is there anything that I am accenting that maybe I shouldn't because it's, it's too much and it's conflicting with what, what somebody else is doing. So um, I work fast because I have a good musical memory. Um, I can hear something and it, it sticks with me. So if, if you know, we change something on the fly in the studio, I'm pretty adaptable in that regard. Give me, a, give me just a little, a little more advanced warning. Yeah. Yeah, please, thanks. <laughs> hey! <laughs> this is called Destroyer of Hearts. Music music by Tim. Lyrics. Yeah, whatever. Okay. That was take one. One more. Here we go. we try to get the best take. So we'll start at the beginning and we'll play for as long as, you know, I feel like the take was good. Um, and you have to remember too, is, you know, playing drums is, is a really physical activity. Duh. I mean, you're, you're using your, your, your whole body. I, I, I go in there. The first thing I do, there's a, there's a thermostat dial immediately behind me on the wall and I'll go back there and I'll turn it down to 68. As soon as I walk in there, I don't want it to be any warmer than 68 when I'm recording my drums. Because the hotter it gets, you know, the the faster I I'll wear out and and I can't go as long. I, my hands start to tire, and um, you know I want to make sure that the takes over the course of the entire day are good. On past records, when I listen to them, I can hear spots where I'm doing a fill in the background that I played to without a vocal track, and then Todd comes in and does his vocal track, and I realize, oh man, I maybe I shouldn't have done that fill because it's now competing with some vocal line that Todd is doing. You know, where with Cult Classic, I got an opportunity to play along to what Todd was doing vocally, and then match some of those parts actually physically to what he was doing. Uh, with the vocal melody, so it, even, it sounds even more locked in than it has in the past. So uh, from that standpoint, that was something really new and exciting. I've worked with Steve at Rightway Studios for so long that it's it's almost like 
going over to a friend's house after you haven't seen them for a while, and then you just find your place on the couch and start BSing, and you're back into the rhythm. So, I mean, there was no reacclimating to the studio. It was like, okay, this is still the microphone, right? I'm going to sing into that um, and try to be in key, and then, uh, yeah, see what happens. Oh, and then hell is taking you over. Yep. Which I can do new right now. Well, I have earlier in the song, but I can do it fresh just to make it a little different. One of the things that I love about in the studio the most is just like seeing that creation come to life. Um, you know, we... When you record, it, it's it's for me personally. I record pretty dry, and then Steve will add his little textures and things in there for my suggestion, or or just what he thinks would sound would 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 amp up the part and make the any aspect of it um, better. And once he does his little trickery in the studio, it just comes to life even more than you than you ever thought possible. You know, you know where it has death warmed over and over. We need another, we are the cross, we are the pentagram, we are the angels, we are the damned, in, in place of that last death warmed over. Yes. Yes. Okay. We are the cross, we are the pentagram. We are the angels, we are the damned. We are the cross, we are the pentagram. We are the angels, we are the damned. Death won't over and over. Hell. A lot of vocals happen in one take and they're great. I'm, I'm very picky. Um, but at this point, usually I put my trust in Steve that, hey, we'll just layer up this part a little. We'll leave this dry, blah, blah, blah. And it ends up working out great, so. I've learned to kind of let go and stop being so anal um, as the years progress. It's, it's, I think it's those, those two lines doubled. Like a, like take each one and then two of them. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. And then, I don't know. It, it might be one and then I go death warmed over and over and then the outro happens. So it's definitely one. Yeah, um, yeah, so it's it's one of those and then death warmed over and over. Yes. Seeing that little baby take its first steps and then jump on a bike and ride down the street is really a cool thing to witness. Um, something that starts is me on my acoustic on my couch, just like, eh, audio memo, that's kind of cool. And then... And then all of a sudden it's a tune and it's sounding really good. And we, it's going to be on an album that has other songs we think turned out really great as well. It's just cool. The whole process is cool. Like, like.